and welcome on in episode number one of 2023 of NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Whelan Engineering on the road, in the air, and around the world. Whelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, and trusted to perform. My name is Chris Wilner, as always, here at the MRN Studios in Concord, North Carolina. Joining me, my trusty co-host, Kyle Rickey, once again. Kyle, we were just talking about uh, not too long ago, we were just doing this to, to wrap up 2022. What happened? Uh, we're already kicking off 23 already. How was your off season? Yeah, it feels just like yesterday uh, that we were uh, wrapping up 2022 leading into the uh, the Phoenix weekend. Off season was great. Um, got a little older, hopefully a little wiser, ready to go for another edition of uh, NASCAR Coast to Coast. Hard to believe this, I think, is year number 11 of this show uh feels just like yesterday we were uh debuting it at remember the old battle of the beach at daytona on the backstretch yeah that was the yep. first show of, of this show uh back all those years ago and and here we are set for another season awesome stuff and yeah i know you're off season you got older i don't know about the wiser part i was pretty busy doing tons of dirt racing uh the rolex 24 some unique opportunities but uh now it's time to talk nascar roots racing if you're new to the show that's what we do we talk about the grassroots level of nascar racing whether it's late model stock cars the arkham menard series and its different divisions of course the nascar wheel and modified tour and everything in between we try to go literally coast to coast and let you know what's going on in the world of short track racing which kyle we talked about last year has been growing exponentially i think this year is going to be even bigger than last year yeah, we'll get into it uh, here in a little bit, but uh, schedules that have come together during the off season, larger than we have ever seen. We're seeing uh, NASCAR advanced auto parts, weekly tracks, jump on board, a bunch of dirt tracks in New York have become part of the program for this season. So uh, healthy, yes, uh, we see this incredible car count, again, which we'll talk about at New Smyrna coming up. We saw a great Chili Willy last week. Everything, uh, for the most part, uh, at least to start 2023, seems to be uh, very healthy for the upcoming year. Yeah, and you just mentioned it. We usually start our years here on NASCAR Coast Coast with talking about New Smyrna, of course, kind of the kickstart to 2023. There have been some races, you know, toward the end of last season and, and like the red eye earlier this year, but it really starts down at New Smyrna with the 57th running of the World Series of Asphalt. Nine days of racing, 13 different divisions. Kyle, we're going to get into that. But just how big is this weekend for short track racing? It seems like anyone who's anyone is going down to New Smyrna here this weekend. Yeah, and I've been monitoring, obviously, social media, as have you, this last uh, couple of days leading into the first weekend. And um, a lot of folks making a, an early vacation of it uh, down on the beach in, in Daytona uh, arrived as early as last weekend. Uh, again, incredible car counts, uh, the, the tour modified to run the, the five uh, nights next week, Monday to Friday, uh, wrapping up with Richie Evans 100. I think there's 48 on the entry list, uh, which is a nearly doubled that number over what they had there five or six years ago, which is incredible. So glad to see the tour mods are healthy. Pro late models over 30, super late models approaching 30, some big names in both. Uh, the trucks, the, uh, the 602 mods, the Florida mods all have healthy fields um, and all of which will be on flow racing. So uh, going to be uh, going to be a great, nine nights of racing and it all kicks off at the end of this week on friday yeah and coming up we're going to talk to the manager of new smyrna speedway rusty marcus just about everything world series and obviously some of the challenges they had to deal with going through hurricane ian at the end of last year but you mentioned uh some racing early on this year already chili willie wrapped up last week out at tucson Preston Peltier, Kyle, we talked about it last year. First driver to do it in the nine-year history going back, going to two wins. Now he's the first driver in ten in its 10-year history to run and win three. So uh, domination effect here for Preston. I think he's stamped as he owns that racetrack now. And he owns that racetrack. Yeah, I feel like he owns most of the tracks on the, the West Coast. Whenever they have a big event up at like Evergreen, seems like he's the driver we're talking about and some of the other short tracks down there. But I tell you what, I watched the race. One of the best short track races I have seen in a long time. A great field of cars. We talk about it every year. Tucson Speedway, formerly Tucson Raceway Park. <clears throat> a, a short track where you can race two and three wide comfortably. 
And it looked like a mini Daytona and Talladega on some of the restarts. Yes. Cole Raz and Preston Peltier had this incredible battle the last 30 laps. A near photo finish uh, on the last, uh, at least coming to the white flag. And then on the, the final lap, Preston was able to squeak out front by a car length over Cole to pick up the win. But a uh, great event, as it always is. Hard to believe it was the 10th annual Chili Willie. And uh, I guess no surprise that Preston picked up the win, kind of dominated the weekend and had to come from the back after spinning mid race. So it wasn't easy for Preston to pick up that checkered flag. Yeah, absolutely. He had to earn that one. I was kind of curious after I watched him spin, I think it was like lap six or seven. I said, man, I don't know. Maybe his bid for three is over. I bit my tongue pretty hard on that one when he came back through the field, making it look easy. So what a race out there in Tucson again, to really kickstart 2023 at the chili Willie. Okay. Now we can go into the world series of asphalt. Of course, rusty Mark is coming up here in just a minute, but let's talk about the, the super late models and the pro late models. You look at some of these fields. I saw Stuart Friesen on the list running a super late model. That's yep. pretty cool. Kind of the dirt modified ACE and obviously in the Craftsman Truck Series. Uh, Derek Griffith, a two-time World Series champ, is, is entered running his own stuff this year. Uh, what stands out to you between the super late models and the pro late models? Obviously, William Swalich, one of the youngsters we talked about last year. Uh, he's going to be good. Can Is it? I mean, pretty much there's at least, what, 10, 10 or 12 drivers, I think, that can win this thing? Casey Roderick, uh, red eye winner back to start the season. Uh, Giovanni Ruggiero, who we've uh, talked a lot about over the last uh, 365 days. Brad May, who has New Smyrna Speedway figured out on a regular basis, I think is the, the local favorite. Uh, you mentioned Derek Griffith. So super late model field stacked pro late models. You have guys like Connor Jones, uh, Gustine, uh, the ladies, Tony Bridinger, Katie Hedinger. I think uh, they will shine over the next uh, 10 nights. Jimmy Renfrew, just some of the names there in the pro late models. Um, then, you know, you the tour modifieds, you just pick one of 48 drivers. It's an incredible lineup. It's going to be fun. Burt Myers, Ronnie Williams, Teddy Hodgson. Big money Matt Hirschman will be there as well. We'll start uh, with the tour race on Saturday night and we'll stay the week. Uh, Craig Lutz, Anthony Bello, Jimmy Blewett, the list goes on and on and on uh, for, for all of the divisions, but particularly those three. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned the tour mods, a lot of crossover with obviously the NASCAR wheel and modified tour kickstarting its season once again uh, on Saturday night at New Smyrna and, and, and defending champion John McKennedy. But Doug Kobe back in, in the Tommy Baldwin racing machine sure. full time for this year, the, the longest wheel and modified tour schedule 19 races uh, i think in nearly 20 years this is the biggest schedule they've had so uh it'll be so much fun to watch them the ground pounders kick things off it's a heck of a race each and every year uh but don't count out those tour mod races as well over the course of the week matt hirschman picked up that championship uh last year all right well we do have our special guest on the line and we're going to talk all things new smyrna get into those modifieds and everything world series of asphalt that is rusty marcus coming up next here on nascar coast to coast presented by wheel and engineering Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers and warning systems for the automotive, aviation and mass notification industries worldwide. Whelan products are designed, sourced and manufactured in America and tested on site to meet the toughest industry standards. Whelan Engineering, manufactured in America for over 70 years. We never left and we're here to stay. Welcome back into NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Wheel and Engineering. Our special guest joining us from his vehicle, that is manager of New Smyrna Speedway, Rusty Marcus. Rusty, uh, I know you're probably one of the busiest guys right now trying to prepare for the 57th running of the World Series of Asphalt. Just how excited are you? The week is finally here. We've got teams headed your way in the Sunshine State. You ready to go? Let me tell you something. When I turned the corner this morning to come to the racetrack, last night I left at 10 o'clock. There was 77 uh, trailers here this wow. morning when I pulled in that number had gone through the roof they're everywhere today is early parking that's all we're doing today early parking that's it and there's over a hundred trailers out there right now now all the thing they can do today is drop those trailers but to answer your question we are so excited for race fans I think what this is actually proving is asphalt racing is making a huge comeback you know it's always been dirt asphalt dirt asphalt 
we got a real good thing going on right now because dirt and asphalt are doing great. And for the racing community, that's huge. And, and we were talking a little bit ago in the opening segment about the growth of, of asphalt racing and about the growth of this event. I mean, 48 tour modifieds, I think, are entered, you know, five, six, seven years ago. You may have got 20, 25. Um, you almost doubled it. Why do you think that is? You know what? There is no answer for it. I mean, it's we've got a great crew here that uh, puts everything together for us. Um and it's just it, it keeps growing and growing and growing, and we're so happy. We had we had to fence in the front parking lot for added pit spaces because you know New Smyrna was built in 1966. People were bringing their stuff in on an open trailer and a pickup truck, and if you had a tire rack, you were rich. And now that you know it's all this big equipment, and it, it builds up really fast, and it's a great problem to have. It's a huge problem when you're trying to get everything in there packed in. But it's it's so great to, to see what's going on here and to see what's happening in the racing world because it, it's exciting for everybody, not just for New Smyrna Speedway. We have to look at this as race fans and go, we're still alive. We're still strong. We're getting better. And that is the great thing. What's the undertaking like? Because, you know, for a lot of different racetracks, they have maybe one, two big events, but it's maybe a one to two day show you've got to put on nine nights of racing and each night is huge you also have obviously the wheel and modified tour running one night you've got you know 13 different divisions what is the undertaking like for you and your staff every year for this week-long event i tell you what we've been doing it for so long now it, trust me it gets a little overwhelming at times but uh, it's funny because when we go to like the snowball derby and we're talking to them up there and they go how do you do this for nine nights? And I said, really, it's 10. <laughs> but yeah. here's the thing. Once it, once you start getting the groove on, you know, it's like this morning when we started doing the early parking. You got to get the wheels rolling first. And they never roll like you want them to at first. But then it starts rolling. And then here it goes. And you get into your flow. And like I said, with the, with the team that we've got here, um, once those wheels start going, here we go. It, it, it goes effortlessly. Um, and, and it, and it's so exciting to see this whole thing get put together because it is a big dance here. Um, you know, from the, from the race director to the flag man, to the tech, to the parking, everything. And you, and you see all this stuff start getting together and you're so proud of everybody because everybody knows what they're doing. They know how to put on a good show. They know how to entertain the fam. The drivers have been being great. Uh, I was out in the parking lot this morning trying to get things going this morning. And one of the guys come and they go, well, it's good to see that you got this good of an attitude doing this. And I'm like going, yeah, well, you know, what else you got to do? <laughs> because here's the thing. We're doing this for everybody. It's not about me. It's not about uh, any one person. It's about stock car racing. And if you're a stock car fan, you've got to get excited because for the next couple of weeks, all eyes are on Florida and the Volusia County area in particular. We got two great tracks running here. And New Smyrna, of course, is our favorite. But there's another track running here with two also with dirt, and they're doing very well. That makes me happy because that means our sport is healthy. Yeah, there's a whole short track world converging there uh, at those two racetracks over the next couple of weeks. Want to talk about your racetrack, your property for a moment. I know a couple of big hits weather-wise last fall, Hurricane Ian. Um, there was another storm that really tore through central Florida, through the east coast of Florida. Did a lot of damage. You guys were forced to cancel some big events toward the end of the year. How have you guys rebounded? It sounds like uh, things are all but back to normal. Well, let me tell you something. This old girl's ready for a pound, and she's sitting out there. We had all kinds of tests done to her, and the the experts told us she's good. We did the we did the red eye, and we had great numbers for the red eye. She held up great. Everybody's excited. This old girl at the racetrack, she's a grand old lady, and she is excited. Now, keep in mind, in October we had 19 inches of water inside the tech building, the concessions. We lost a lot of stuff. There was a lot of damage done to New Smyrna Speedway physically. Uh, not a lot of focus was put on that because we were – when we had the tests done, they came back. We found – I didn't even know this. We've got nine inches of asphalt in the turns, four inches on the straightaways. Information you might not need, but you know what? I got it, so I'm sharing it. And, you know, we it, it was so neat to watch those core samples come out because keep in mind, that asphalt, is, is the cores have been there since this track was built. And if you look at that core, 
and you think of the history and the people that have run over that asphalt, it'll bring a tear to your eye. What uh, what was the the cleanup process like? I know you mentioned the the amount of water and the concession stands at the tech shed, things like that. But was there any worry about not being able to run this event? Or obviously, when you kind of got word that the red eye was going to go, okay, you probably felt a lot easier uh, and were able to sleep at night. But kind of walk me through what what happened in terms of the cleanup effort to get that track ready to go for the red eye. Well, and, and the way that it all came down, the, the day of the storm. The storm was still happening, and I just live a little ways down the road. And when it started calming down a little bit, I said, I need to go check the track to see what's happening. Because, you know, a few years ago, we lost a ton of seats when a little tornado came through and knocked everything over to the catch fence out. I got here, and I could not believe my eyes when I walked up to the racetrack. The pictures are on our our Facebook page and our website. The water turned three and four, two and a half lanes underwater the inside wall and three and four underwater uh, in, in the middle of the racetrack at the tech building we've got an f-450 uh, safety truck up to the rocker panels it was uh, it, it was something that you've never seen you don't know how to take it now the damages were done yes we got worried we got very worried we went into immediately uh you know once it dries out do we need to repave it do we need to repave it before the world series because obviously the world series very important to do some on a speedway um, and a racing period. It, it's not, it's not just about us. Again, this is the temperature of the, of the whole racing community. And I was at the snowball derby and I got the call from uh, the experts with the asphalt. And they said, you are good to go. I cannot tell you how much that took off of me at that point. Because now we knew the racetrack was okay. That's our biggest problem. We can make the rest of this stuff work. But if you don't have a racetrack, you don't have anything. Once I got the surface, you know what? If we have to work out of a trailer in the infield, we'll work out of a trailer. And everything started coming together. Uh, The people came in and and did some repairs and whatnot. And everything just came together. And here we are today. Beautiful Florida day. If you're up north. You need to come down because it is absolutely gorgeous here today, and we're getting these cars parked. Tomorrow we'll park more cars. We'll start the organized practice, and then Friday it all breaks loose. A lot of cars running a lot of special events over the next couple yeah. of weeks. How important is it to keep those events intact? I mean, the Richie Evans 100, the John Blewett uh, the third Memorial. Uh, you got the uh, the Clyde Hart Memorial on Monday night with the Southern Super Series. A uh, lot of big events, uh, big feel events over these next couple of weeks for you guys. Yes, the ASA Southern Super Series came in, and that race is on Tuesday. Now, last year we did it yep. on Monday, um, and the Southern Super Series came in, ASA Southern Super Series, and – we made a deal with them. Hey, you want to do the Clyde Hart? Because they've tried several times to put on races here at New Smyrna Speedway, and they're a great organization. That, that, uh, Tim Bryant at Five Flag Speedway. If you don't like Tim Bryant, there's something wrong with you. He's a great guy. And so we made a deal with them to come down here and put this race on, which I think adds a little bit of fluff to this thing and a little bit more prestige. So we're really excited about that. Of course, the Wheel and Modified Tour. Holy crow. Uh, yesterday we checked the tickets. Um, uh, Reserve seating already sold out. Now, there's general admission tickets, so don't think that you can't come. It'll be a zoo here on Saturday. It'll be a complete zoo. And we're looking for a lot of things to happen this week to make it for all the races because this is such a grand event. And, you know, I sit back and I go, how in the world did I get where I'm at? Because this is worldwide stuff here. This isn't just, you know, hey, we're going to put on a race. Let's see what happens. This is huge. And you mentioned to go along with those special events, the modified tour, right? The the ground pounders kicking off their season. How important is it to keep those that tour a part of the World Series? Obviously, NASCAR celebrating 75 years this year. It's going to be huge no matter what. But how important is it for you at the, as a track to have the modified tour kick off its season amidst all the chaos that is the World Series? Right. And and here's the thing. We've been we've wanted the wheel of modified tour here for a long time. Things just didn't work out. Robert Hart, the owner of New Smyrna Speedway, huge modified fam. He wanted the wheel and tour. He wanted it, wanted it, wanted it. Finally, last year, we got, or year before, we got with Jimmy Wilson and we said, let's see what we can do to make this happen. And what do you know? It happened. When it happened, it was total chaos. I mean, people were, they were in the rafters. In fact, 
they tore down our fence and <laughs> snuck in the back way. <laughs> oh but it, it, it's a great event to have. And, you know, as soon as, um, as soon as that happened, uh, we, we, uh, made the deal to come back this year and I'm sure we'll continue doing it because it's a great show. And I, and I tell people, you know, when I've been walking around the, the parking lot, uh, where, where all the trucks are parked right now, if you're a historian, you missed a huge opportunity because I was putting numbers on trailers and whatnot. And almost every crew with each trailer had a story about the world series of asphalt. And, you know, this is our so many of the year we've been coming here since so-and-so, you know, my dad raced here, my grandfather raced here. And like I said, if you were a historian, you would have been in sheer heaven. Absolutely. Uh, it's an incredible event. It's been going on for, for decades. and so glad the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour is finally a part of it as of uh, last season. Glad you're back this year to kick off uh, their 2023 campaign. My final question for you is about your 2023 season beyond the World Series. Uh, another full slate of, uh, of, of racing for you guys this year? Uh-oh. I love it. Uh, we got you. Have you got me? Yep. We got you back. Yeah. Okay. How's, <laughs> how's the, how's As you can the imagine, the phone's ringing a whole bunch. <laughs> oh, he's you know, getting a phone we, call. I can imagine. Yeah. We were. This is going to be a great nine nights, folks. And I'm not saying it just because it's New Smyrna Speedway, because I work here, or whatever. I'm saying this because this is important to racing. It's important to NASCAR. It's important to all of us because it's showing the strength that's coming back and asphalt racing well thank you so much rusty and i and i also heard some rumblings too you guys are going to repave after the world series right right we were going to pave before the world series this year and that was part of the damages and stuff and we're like you know it's she's a little old but here's the thing that surface is still in really good shape and we were going to do it before the world series and it was funny because we were going back and forth and who's your call me and they said look we're great partners, but we would prefer if you not, because they're trying to get tires built for this thing. And it was at that sweet spot where, you know, you're needing to get tires built. The more I thought about it, I was like, so we all decided we would wait until 2023. Right now it's scheduled to be resurfaced after the governor's cup, which got canceled last year because of the storms. Yep. Well, wow. Lots going on, Rusty. We'll let you get back to it. Good luck parking all those rigs and have a great 10 days out there at the racetrack. Best of luck to you and your team. Thank you so much. And we hope to see everybody down here. Remember, raising action at 730. We're right on the action corner of 44 and 415. Be there. That was the greatest tease I think we've ever had on this show. Thank you so much. Rusty Marcus, manager of New Smyrna Speedway. Coming up next, we've got our top three storylines of the offseason. We're going to dive a little bit more to the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, kind of a season preview as they kickstart their weekend on Saturday. That's all coming up next on NASCAR Coast to Coast, presented by Wheel and Engineering. Wheelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers and warning systems for the automotive, aviation and mass notification industries worldwide. Wheelan products are designed, sourced and manufactured in America and tested on site to meet the toughest industry standards. Wheelan Engineering, manufactured in America for over 70 years. We never left and we're here to stay. Welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Wheelan Engineering. Kyle, boy, what an interview with uh, Rusty Marcus. You could tell the energy is there. Uh, he's going to have to keep that up for 10 nights because that's a lot of, of racing set to go down at New Smyrna here this weekend. But what a joy to talk to him and got me pumped. I'm thinking about maybe taking a drive down there this weekend. Yeah, no doubt. The, the, the most excited guy right now, I think in Florida and Part of me believes that he can keep that energy up for the next uh, couple of weeks until we get uh, buttoned up in uh, with the Orange Blossom 100, I believe, the final night for the Super Late Models next Saturday. So uh, he's got a long week ahead, and I don't see many people that can take that on more than Rusty Marcus. Uh, all the energy in the world, all the heart in the world, and it's going to be a great event down there. Can't wait to, to begin to tune in on Friday. That's right. And you can watch it all on Flow Racing as well, the official streaming partner 
of the World Series of Asphalt. Now, we did talk a lot about the Modified Tour, but not only do they begin at New Smyrna, which we saw a great race with Matt Hirschman last year, kicks off that 19-race schedule for 2023, the longest since 2004 on the Modified Tour national schedule. Kyle, uh, we saw it last year. It it was a rough start for three-time uh, champion Justin Bonsignor having to come back through the entire season to try to make a run at a championship. He fell short, John McKennedy obviously getting the title, but it was a three-horse race there at the end. I would expect the same this year with the loaded talent uh, that's going to be on the national tour this year. Yeah, and we've seen that the last couple of years. Uh, big name drivers getting off to rough starts at New Smyrna with with a big car count. You know, guys that we expect to contend for the championship finishing 35th or 36th in New Smyrna, having to crawl their way back up through the standings during the summer months and are able to contend like Justin toward the end of the season. You know, you add Doug Kobe into the mix now, full-time with Tommy Baldwin racing. Uh, Ron Silk is back, a former champion. Going to be a, a who's who once again in 2023. Three, and you touched on the schedule, 14, 15 different venues, I believe, 19 races, largest calendar since 2004, going to North Wilkesboro Speedway on September 30th, going back to Seekonk on June 10th, a couple of the highlights along with wrapping up the season at the Martinsville Speedway in October. So uh, a very diverse schedule and uh, you know a, a great field of cars to contend each and every week. Yeah, and we've got some part-timers going to be taking part in the national tour this year for the Wheel and Modified Tour. Ryan Newman, Bobby Labonte uh, teaming up as teammates uh, out there with Sadler Stanley Racing. Uh, Bobby, I know, ran a lot of smart races last year, picked up a couple yep. wins, but to go part-time now on the national tour schedule, Ryan Newman obviously won at North Wilkesboro in the uh, tour-type mod race there in the Racetrack Revival Series in 2022. So uh, those were just the many storylines. You mentioned uh, Doug Kobe back with Tommy Baldwin. Uh, and then you've got some of those drivers like Craig Lutz, Austin Beers that made some noise this year, this past season uh, in their kind of early careers in the modified tours. So uh, it'll be fun to see what happens uh, throughout the 2023 season. I cannot wait. Again, that race begins at 7 p.m. on uh, Saturday night uh, on Flow Racing, the uh, 200 lapper at New Smyrna to kick off the Wheeland Modified Tour. All right, Kyle, a uh, couple storylines from the offseason we want to catch everybody up on. The big one. Comes with uh, some NASCAR flair on the short tracks, and that's the Cars Tour. Uh, now not only going to be on Flow Racing, so a much bigger audience for short track racing fans, but now a new ownership group with Dale Earnhardt Jr., Kevin Harvick, Justin Marks, and Jeff Burton getting in the mix. Holy cow, what a star-studded lineup, Kyle. I think the the stars are, or the, the really the future is so bright uh, for the Cars Tour this year with that new announcement. Yeah, no doubt they're going to take that uh, that division to a new level. Uh, the announcement this week of of that series moving to Flow Racing to kind of uh, you know incorporate it into where many of these big touring divisions have ended up, and a lot of the weekly racetracks over the last three years on Flow Racing. Um, it's going to be easy to find now, and that can only grow the audience. Uh, they have some great venues on the schedule for 2023. A lot of interest to, to the teams down in the Carolinas that are going to run full time. Um, and when you get those four behind it, uh, should just elevate that tour that much more. So i uh, look forward to seeing how it all pans out for the Cars Tour in 2023. Absolutely. And one of its now owners, Dale Earnhardt Jr., is going to get back behind the wheel of a late model stock car again a couple times this year. He did announce he's going to run this weekend at Florence in the icebreaker event down there with Brendan Queen, who won the uh, uh, South Carolina 400 at the end of last season. So big names kicking off. If you're a late model stock fan, that's coming up this weekend as well. Florence, that coverage on Flow Racing. All right, a couple other news and notes to take care of from the offseason. How about the national tour, Kyle? We talked about this last year, the national super late model schedule. I think it's going to be 10 races, six states covered uh, to kind of incorporate some of the regional series, but to make it a national slate. Uh, they announced they're going to kick things off at Five Flags coming up in March. So, the national tours here uh, be interesting to see the entry list once those come out. But Kyle, you like the idea of a national super late model tour? I have questions, uh, but we'll okay. see. Um, you know, I, I know super late model racing, much like the modifieds, popular in different regions of the country, but not every region. So we'll see where where it finds success hopefully everywhere, but I, you know, have a feeling that there may be an event or two that maybe doesn't find the success that they had hoped. Um, you know, you're going to get the big guys 
there regardless the Bubba Pollards of the world I'm sure will be there week in and week out no matter where they go and no matter you know how often they race but uh, I know it's a, a pretty small schedule in year number one not too many races different regions of the country uh, we'll see you know hopefully they're all successful um, and uh, you know we can we can look for growth in 2024 but uh, yeah well I'm interested to see how how this first season goes yeah, absolutely. And uh, kind of the other big storyline, we talked about it last year at the end, the championship battle between Lane Riggs and Peyton Sellers for the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly National Championship. Well, that kind of list of, of available tracks to be a part of that series has just grown uh, by three. A couple historical tracks being added to that NASCAR sanctioning for 2023. Fonda Speedway, Georgetown Speedway, and Utica Rome Speedway now being added to the list. So that opportunity now grows for some of those drivers in the Northeast to take part, run weekly at their track, and and put their name to the ring for possibly a national championship. But Kyle, again, you talked about at the top of the show, the growth of short track asphalt racing now getting bigger. Those three are big-time tracks being added to the NASCAR sanctioning list. Yeah, and, and from uh, the Dirt Series. So it's going to add a whole different flair and a whole new opportunity uh, for a different group of drivers to have a shot at the championship. The last couple of years, we've talked pretty much about guys from South Boston contending for the title. Well, uh, you know, a, a racetrack that has great car counts, that runs regularly, and guys that constantly run up front and run for the national championship. Well, if you add three racetracks in the same region on dirt now with Fonda, Georgetown, and Utica Rome, uh, that adds a whole different element to what the national championship picture could look like when we get to the fall. So a whole different group of drivers that maybe a lot of us have never even heard of could contend for a national title this year with these three tracks coming under the NASCAR banner. Boy, the, I mean, this season is already off to a great start. I cannot wait to keep covering it all for you here on NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Wheelan Engineering. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, to episode number one of the season. Kyle, uh, we get to talk about ARCA racing next week because it's time to talk Speed Weeks already. You ready to go? And there's a ton of storylines there, too. There yes. were like 60 drivers at the test last month. I can't wait to to talk about the Arkham and Art Series next week on the show as we get set to go to Daytona. That's right. Thank you so much once again to Rusty Marcus of New Smyrna Speedway for joining us. Of course, we'll talk all things World Series and recap that event next week and then get into the Arkham Menard Series kicking off its season at Daytona. For Kyle Ricky, Pat Jaggers, our producer, I'm Chris Wilner. Thanks for tuning in to NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Wheelan Engineering. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Wheelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, and trusted to perform. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week here on Coast to Coast.